Hey everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how I ink foreshortened hands and arms in this illustration of the spell Nitar's Fireballs for the Mystic Punks RPG. Benjamin Mara here, illustrator and cartoonist. Welcome to my channel where I reveal to you my process and give insights about art projects I'm working on with the hope you'll learn some new techniques and be inspired when making your own art. In this image I have the punk casting this spell called Nitar's Fireballs and the fireballs are obviously erupting from the fingertips of the punk spellcaster. It's a quarter page canvas size, but I decided to extend the fireballs out a little bit further and just make them a little larger because I feel like the way I had it sketched out, which actually fit in the quarter size canvas precisely, the fireballs they didn't have a, as big a presence as they needed to in order to convey the idea of this spell. So I enlarged them a bit just before I started inking. The hand of the punk is much larger and it's like a foreshortened effect. Very comic booky, very Jack Kirby. A lot of the times I like to make the hand not foreshortened and look like it's in the same proportion as the body of the character, even if it is an opportunity to foreshorten the hand. I just think it looks more generic to have the hand be pretty small, even if it's foreshortened. There's some artists that do this to great effect. I like Jason Burroughs handling of foreshortened limbs and hands and when he's drawing his comics. I just prefer the kind of generic quality to figures when I'm drawing comics, but for this illustration, I'm going against that instinct and really foreshortening this hand that's coming at the viewer to create some kind of sense of power behind this spell. Because it's a spot illustration, it kind of needs a little bit more of a powerful presence on the page than something that's going to be more generic, which I can get away with in a comic book panel. When I'm doing illustration, there's obviously a different mindset that I'm applying to the art creation rather than creating a comic. It's just a different mentality entirely. With comics, I'm thinking more about economy. I'm thinking about storytelling, thinking about speed. I've got to get pages done much faster than if I was doing a single illustration. With illustration, you can just sort of linger on things, linger on parts of the image, and just really fine tune, luxuriate on certain aspects of the drawing. So here I'm getting into the hand. As far as foreshortening goes, I really eyeball the arm quite a bit. I don't use any perspective or anything like that. I've just drawn so many arms and foreshortened perspective. I, I don't really need to look at reference or anything like that. I can kind of make it up in a believable way. The punk is wearing a kind of futuristic leather jacket, but that's kind of how I imagine it. So I want to give the leather jacket a surface that looks like it's reflecting light a bit. Again, I always think about Tom Palmer's hands when I'm drawing in my hands on my characters. Just each segment of the digits is really pronounced and easy to see. Drawing these fireballs, I'm just using an iconography from comic books for flames. It's mostly just feathering. Recently I've been really into deadlines that are indicative of power comics and in cases like this I just can't use a deadline instrument like a tech pen brush or something like this. The fireballs really call for a feathering tool. The variation of the line weight just conveys the visual nature of flame way better than a deadline would. Also, it's just faster for me to 
get to where I need to be to convey this idea of fire with a nib pen as some line weight variation. Since the fireballs themselves are the source of light on this character and the hands, I'm shading in on the digit segments this way. I'm hoping that this feathering technique gives off a sense of motion for the fireballs. I don't think that I do a good job of showing the fireballs actually coming at the viewer, but that's okay with me. I think that the idea of these fireballs coming off the fingertips of this spellcaster punk is enough. Going in with a thicker brush to render the jacket of the punk. I think the clasps of the jacket are inspired by some kind of Frank Miller jacket design from Dark Knight Returns. I'm just doing the jeans, thinking about where the light source is going to affect the shadows on the jeans. I'm going back in with the uh, stiff version of the pen nib. I was using a little bit of a softer pen nib. This one's stiffer and I can get a little bit more detail work. I like rendering the seams on jeans. You can use that to really show the folds and convey the feeling of a fabric. Going back into the jacket with a pen, this time as an eraser, to pull out a few highlights. I'm going in with a little bit thicker pen, leaning a little heavier on the line to give the hand a little bit more support, just outlining it a little bit more so it's not so flimsy, accenting the fireballs a little bit more. At this point, the drawing is pretty much done and I can go through it and add some finishing touches here and there where I think it needs it. Pulling back and surveying it, I realized that I'd like to put in a hand behind the punk. So I'm just gonna do a quick silhouette of a hand. I'm not even penciling out what it would look like, just sort of figuring out out on the fly with inks. It's easy to do that with digital inks for sure. I can go in and clean it up. This is very much a comic book character pose. I think he doesn't have enough of a look to be a punk, so I'm just gonna add some piercings to his face to make him look more like a punk. I should've put more piercings in his ears. Now I'm putting some metal studs on the arms of the jacket he's wearing I need to make him look a little bit more like a punk. I'm gonna give him a chain wallet because maybe he's a punk from the 90s. It's easy to, easy to make edits like this on the fly with digital inks. They're almost like pencils, like final pencils. You can erase and redraw things so easily. You might as well be working in pencil, but it's even better than pencils because you're not augmenting or destroying the drawing surface in any way. So this is the final drawing. I think it's pretty good. I'm not super, super happy with it, but I'm not super happy with anything I do. I think it does the job. That's good enough for me for now. I'll live to fight another day and hopefully do better next time. <laughs>